much of the high costs in the US healthcare are services. That is, people doing actually things for other people. Now, one radical perspective would be to say, well, we just have to cut a lot of personnel costs, and then it's going to be fine. And that's, of course, what many people also fear, that robots will replace the doctors and the nurses and so on. But the other perspective that we might be able to take is to say, in many cases, these services are inefficiently provided. In many cases, they are not even reaching the people who actually need them, geographically or because of uh, lack of uh, finances. And if we can use artificial intelligence, and especially maybe agentic artificial intelligence as uh, forms of robots, to extend the reach of doctors, nurses, and so on. Can we show maybe some of that? Would you speak to that? Oh, the, the front yes, of the video. Sure. Yeah, we can maybe take okay, a quick so look at that. OK, so why don't we give a, a, an example of what we're talking about? One of the main reasons why people with impaired mobility are no longer able to live alone in their own home is fear of falling and the related consequences. This risk can be addressed by the installation of a fall detector, which sends an alert in case of an emergency, allowing assistance to be promptly provided. In that case, CareRobot makes its way automatically to the place where the fall has occurred. At the same time, the service centre becomes involved. Trained members of staff are able to use the robot's cameras to make an initial assessment of the situation and to talk to the person who has just fallen. If necessary, they can immediately call an emergency service and also provide the necessary patient information, such as recent blood pressure measurements or information on any allergies. While waiting for the emergency service to arrive, staff at the service center can act to calm the person who has just fallen. Alternatively, they can instruct the robot to fetch the person a drink or a pillow until help finally arrives. Now, I should say, uh, this is trying to paint the picture of technology being useful to help people. But you wouldn't actually want to have a five to $10,000 robot to do this. You can have a lot cheaper technology uh, as fall detectors. You can use your iPhone, and you can use other very simple things to deal with that particular problem. But what this company and others try to illustrate is that to have somebody or something there in the uh, home of an elderly person might help with a number of needs and problems that right now nobody else can meet. You can't expect the daughter or son or a nurse or a doctor or the neighbor to actually be there to, for example, provide some company to these people who uh, suffer from enormous loneliness, often loss of self-worth, and when they have a need, might be embarrassed to actually call somebody. I, I forgot where my reading glasses are. I don't know where my house keys are. A huge number of people in the US and in the world suffer from early stages of Alzheimer's. We all become older and so old that one of these problems are going to afflict us. And small things that are embarrassing to admit actually limit your ability to live a uh, alone or at least live in some way at home. And this is the number one desire of all people who, as they get older, to stay at home as long as possible. But you can't do this without some help of technology.